Last example we're going to do for our nice little uh, polynomials here, graphing of polynomials. Uh, on this one, as you can see, it's a little bit different than the last two because this one's in factored form. Uh, that does make some things a little bit different. Uh, it makes some things easier and makes some things harder. Uh, probably makes it a little bit harder to find the degree because you can't just look and see what the degree is. You have to actually kind of calculate it. So this would have a degree of 2 right here. And uh, when you multiply this all out, since you're cubing it, that will have a degree of 3. And then this right here will have a degree of 1. So when you multiply things together, you can add the exponents. So 2 times, or 2 plus 3 plus 1 will give us a degree of 6. So therefore, that's even. Our leading coefficient, since this right here is a coefficient of 1, uh, when you cube that, that will also be uh, have a coefficient of 1, and that will have a coefficient of 1. So our uh, leading coefficient is 1, which is positive. The way this helps us out is because um, we can find our end behavior. An even function with a positive leading coefficient, uh, both sides will go up. So the left side will go up, and the right side of our graph will also go up. Excellent. Now what we can do is go ahead and uh, figure out what our zeros are. Uh, zero is a little bit easier when it's in factored form like this because we don't really have to do anything. We just have to set them equal to zero. When you set x squared equal to zero, you're going to get zero with the multiplicity of two. When you set this equal to zero, you get one with the multiplicity of three because of the uh, exponent. And this will give us a zero of negative two. So as you can see, uh, this is going to help us out because we have an idea of the zeros. And as you can see, we're going to get six different zeros, or not different, but six zeros in total. Uh, next, we're going to look for our nice little uh, y-intercept. Our y-intercept, since our x-intercept is zero, it's going to be our y-intercept also, plus when you plug in zero here, that's going to be zero, and zero times anything else will give us zero. When we're talking about symmetry, because we're cubing a polynomial and multiplying it by everything else, you're going to end up with both odd and even uh, exponents. So therefore, there's no symmetry in this one. So let's see if we can't go over to the next screen and graph it. So now we're going to try to graph our polynomial. So here's our x-axis, here's our polynomial. So let's see if we can't do that. First thing we do, we're going to put the zeros, 0, 1, and negative 2. A negative 2, 0, and 1. Uh, as you can see, we have values 0 has a multiplicity of 2, 1 has a multiplicity of 3, and then uh, negative 2 has a multiplicity of 1. Left and right hand behavior are both going to go up. Oops, wrong way. So this should cross right here. Uh, it'll bounce off of this one. And then here it's going to kind of wiggle as it goes through. And the reason we know it's going to wiggle as it goes through is because that's what a cubic function does when it crosses the x-axis. So here you have a linear function which will go straight through it. Here you have a quadratic that's going to bounce. And here you have a cubic function which will kind of wiggle. So I'm just going to plug in a couple values. I'm going to plug in negative 3. I'm going to plug in negative 1. And I'll probably plug in 2 to figure out where my function is. Usually when the degree is pretty high like this, uh, you're going to see some pretty extreme values. And we'll just look and see. So negative 2. Uh, this will give us negative 2 squared. And then here we'll get negative 3 cubed. And then, oh, I may have plugged in a 0. That's my mistake. My bad. I can't use a 0 because I know what that function value is. Negative 3 instead. So we'll go negative 3 squared. This will be negative 4 cubed. And then here we'll have a negative 2. So working this out, uh, again, you'll see the numbers are going to get really, really large really quickly. So this is going to give us 9. And then times, let's see, negative 64. And then times negative 2. So as you can see, the numbers are, no, are not going to be on this uh, graph at all. They get up uh, so high. Uh, but it will be a positive number. So my numbers are going to look something like this. So let's go ahead and plug in negative 1 now and just make sure that uh, if it's on the graph, we'll show that it's on the graph. So this will be negative 1 squared. This will be negative 2 cubed. And then this will be a positive 1. So when you square that, you'll get 1. This will give us negative 8. 
and then times 1. So we'll be at negative 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our graph will look a little something like this. It will cross the x-axis there. Whoops. Let me start over. I was in my line of sight. So that graph will look a little something like that. Uh, again, it's going to cross right through this one. It's going to bounce off this one. And we'll plug in 2 just to kind of see what we get. See if it's close to being on the graph or not. This will be 2 squared. Uh, this will be 1 cubed. And then this will be 4. So hopefully this won't be too bad. Uh, that will give us a nice little 4 times 1 times 4. So we're up at 16 at this point. So as you can see, it's going to increase at a pretty rapid rate. So uh, just remember to plug in a couple values to give you a, le a little bit of a decent idea of what your graph looks like. And then also uh, remember what the multiplicity does in terms of your graphs. All right, that's it.